Carly Red's face looks so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. <laughs> It's your favorite, favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love & Hip Hop ATL, shout it. This is Season 9, Episode 2, No Witness, No Protection. <laughs> That's a crazy-ass title. As always, church announcements. If you have not done so, just check on and subscribe to my channel. Make sure your notification bells are turned on, because YouTube is tripping right goddamn now. The um, notification gang dude, whoever work in that department, they off in quarantine. So, ain't nobody really been knowing what's going on. So, child, make sure your notification bells are turned on. Girl, hide your kids, hide your wife. Everybody getting quarantined out this goddamn bitch. And, um, let me know you stop by. Give me thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, y'all like my shirt? What'd it say? Good friends wine together. My boo Tracy made me this shirt, y'all. I'm going to leave her information down in my description box below. And thank you to everybody that has been reaching out to me. I appreciate y'all. We are still doing drive through testings at my job. Um, and we'll be doing it for the rest of this week, next week, and a few more weeks to come. So y'all keep your auntie in prayers that I do not get this Rona. Because bitch, this bitch is getting everybody out here. Hot your kids, hot your wife, because everybody getting Rona out here. Straight up. But look here. Y'all, this episode was good. I can't stand Carly Red face though. I can't stand her goddamn face. Her face looks uncomfortable. So look here. I don't want to make this review long because I'm tired, child. I got to get my ass back up at work in the morning. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Girl, Carly Red get on my goddamn nerves. So this picks up with Carly Red at the goddamn funeral home, right? Spice is there, Rashida, Mimi, and Ty. Come to find out, this bitch called them there because she is celebrating a one-year anniversary. She wants to put her marriage to death. She is burying her marriage. Apparently, a year ago, she had married Mo. Mo cheated on her, had a prostitute in the house, girl. Carly Red face is so plumped up. It's like, it just looks so goddamn uncomfortable. So they like, bitch, did nobody die? What you call us out here for, Carly? the hell? Yeah, they, I was irritated too. I'm like, this whole dramatic ass bitch right here, which I get it. You been through some stuff. I get it. She showed them pictures of a prostitute that was up in her house and all that. I don't blame you. I try to take that nigga out too. She said that she's been stressed. She was depressed over this dude, probably losing weight, losing hair and all this other goddamn bullshit. But y'all know Carly so dramatic. I didn't mean to be mean to that girl. I ain't, I ain't dismissing nothing she say. She's just dramatic. We at the Trap Music Museum. Jock is hosting and Light Skin Keisha is performing. Now, my sister had actually turned me on to her. I think she got a YouTube channel with uh, called The Vangos or something. Her boyfriend is Coco Vanga. Uh, Coco Vanga. I've never heard of either one of them. I'm not even going to lie. Then again, I'm what you would consider to be an old school bitch. I'm damn near 40. I don't know nothing about no Light Skin Keisha. But I like her. The bitch got bars. Bitch came hard in the motherfucking paint. I like her. She was goddamn good. Shekinah was there. They chopping it up. Her, Jack, and um, Light Skin Keisha and Bango, her boyfriend or whatever, right? Now, um, Light Skin Keisha, I'm, I'm just calling her Keisha. It takes too long to say that. Keisha. Keisha said she did a um, song with Lil Scrappy. And somehow or another, it was up on Instagram. He took it down from Instagram. They don't know what happened. Long story short, Keisha said this nigga Scrappy act funny when he around Bambi. When he ain't around Bambi, he chopping it up with them. He shoot the shit and all of that. When he with Bambi, he don't say nothing to nobody. Now, Jock is like, well, you know what? Never mind. You never know that this nigga may be getting a third degree from Bambi when he around other females. Whoop the whoop, yada, yada, yada. That was an opportunity for Jock ass to go and be messy, right? Now, Jock later on ends up giving um, Scrappy a ride over to Mama D house because y'all know Mama D just had surgery. Jock is chopping it up with Scrappy. Girl, this nigga Jock drives Lyft, too. Was it Lyft, Uber, 
Share ride, ride, share. This nigga got, he works like a goddamn Jamaican. I swear, he got 50 left goddamn jobs. Plus, he say the money good. I heard they make good goddamn money doing Lyft and Uber and all that goddamn shit. But you got to worry about that Rona now. Oh, don't want that goddamn Rona. But, um, um, Jock asked Scrappy, how do you know Keisha? He say that, you know, ain't no beef or nothing between them. He had, you know, posted that they had a picture and then later on he had took it down. It wasn't no big deal. But he says that Bambi's homegirl used to fuck with Coca before he got with um, light skin Keisha. And apparently he ended up getting with Keisha because Keisha was a side chick when he was messing with Bambi homegirl. That's why Bambi don't mess with her. I don't know, child. That's, that's too much chili for the hot dog to me, goddamn. But that's why they don't supposedly mess around. But then later on, like I said, Jock goes and drops Scrappy off at the house. He goes to check on Mama D. Y'all know Mama D is so goddamn dramatic, child. She just had all these surgeries because she drinking. She says she don't drink no goddamn more. Girl, child, Mama D drank. She drank. Sierra's on her way to court, right? She gets up in the morning. She calls Carly Red. This is after she dropped, or she getting ready to go drop her son off at school. Heading to court with her boyfriend, uh, BK or whatever, right? Calls Carly Red because Carly Red is supposed to be like her witness for her and give her support there at the courthouse. Now, Carly says that she's on her way. They show her like, you know, driving to the courthouse, all this and the other. Shooter comes to show her support. When Shooter shows up, she asks him like, you going in the courtroom? He like, hell no, nah, I ain't going in the court, nigga. I just came to show you some moral support nigga i'm praying for you she gets pissed off it's like well nigga, what the fuck is you doing here then i don't need you here to pray for me i need you here to testify man he said i'm not going in there to do that i ain't seen nothing i don't know nothing i've been about nothing i said that nigga wrong as hell yeah you could stay at your ass at the house for that if you want me to go in like she wanted you to you wrong as hell for that but he like look here player i wish you well because she starts going left on his ass. Now, BK is like, you know what? I respect that. He gives them dap and all of that. Like, I respect that. She was like, what you mean you respect that? Respect that for what? This nigga ain't even coming to testify for me. He coming to show me support. He can show me support from at the house. Which I feel you, Sierra. I was, I was, I was thinking the same. What you like, nigga? Nigga, you, you could have sent an email. Give a fuck about that. Child. Carly is running late. She is on her way there. She's caught up in traffic. She finally gets there, goes to the wrong goddamn courthouse, got all kind of goddamn problems going on. The lawyer was actually able to get a continuance on it, so got her court date rescheduled. So now Sierra want to have a party to celebrate that she ain't going to jail on that day, but she might go later. Carly Red never made it there, or she did make it there, but she ended up getting lost, turned around, this and the other. So now Sierra is pissed off about her. She's pissed off at her about that, and now she want to get up and call the red ass about that. We have Akbar V and her son on a play date with Alexis Scott and her daughter, Lele. Her daughter is so damn cute. She has hydrocephalus. Bless her heart. She is such a little miracle baby. She is so beautiful. Now, Akbar looks gorgeous, y'all. Did I say Akbar was beautiful? Bitch, Akbar hair, teethuses, makeup, body, clothes. All of that. Bitch, even in the green screen, I was like, Akbar, you better go shit on these goddamn hoes. She was doing good. Akbar asked Alexis what the hell happened at Rashida's event. Because you know that was the wrong place at the wrong goddamn time to go start some goddamn bullshit or whatever, right? Now, um, she tells Alexis, oh no, um, Alexis tells Akbar about how Carly Red threatened to spit in her grandmama face and about how every time she seen her, it was going to be on site. Now, Alexis does admit that she had that henny in her system, which I done said before about me, brown liquor, bitch, I'm TTG, trained to go, I'm wrecked on that brown liquor. That's why I don't mess with that goddamn shit, I don't do it, ain't nobody got time for it. Alexis said she was on that henny. Bitch, when the henny in your system, the shit goes goddamn left. She said she couldn't help it, and she She wants to holler at Carly, at Carly because she realizes that that was the wrong time and the wrong place for her to go left like that. So she does say that later on she wants to go and have a conversation with Carly, right? Now, um, later on, Rashida goes with Carly, girl. Carly goes to see this goddamn divorce attorney because now she wants to go through with a divorce, y'all. Carly in her face and the injections, I cannot. I will not. No, ma'am. Y'all, Bambi ends up going to the glam shop to see Sierra. Sierra's looking for an outfit to wear her. I didn't go to jail today, but I might go on a couple of months party. Now, <laughs> that's funny to me. 
the, the discussion comes up somehow about light skin Keisha. Bambi like, uh, I don't fuck with her because she was fucking with my girls, men when they was together. Whoop de whoop, yada yada yada. Now Sierra says that she's pissed at Carly because she heard that Carly really didn't even want to come and testify for Sierra. So Sierra thinks that Carly ended up showing there late on purpose so she didn't have to testify. Sierra says she felt like ain't nobody actually put Carly in her place the way she needs to be put in her place, and she wants to be the person to put her in her damn place. I was like, look here. That's where shit goes goddamn left, y'all. Later on, Alexis ends up going to the boxing gym to talk to Carly Red. Y'all, this whole goddamn scene was funny as hell to me. Carly at the boxing gym, like she big bad Billy Badass or some shit. Alexis goes there. They pretending to work out on a little boxing thing. Then Carly's like, okay, so what's up? You had one to talk to me? The whole time, Alexis and Carly are talking Carly got a dukes up like this. Like this the whole time. Got a box and gloves on her box. She just got a dukes up the whole time. I'm like, bitch, are you waiting on a swing? Are you waiting on a punch? What are you waiting to happen, Carly? Because you got your dukes up. Like, put them up. Put them up. Put them up. That bitch was ready. I was like, okay. She was like, bitch, what you not going to do? It's catch me with my goddamn guards down. At all times, I'm finna protect my goddamn self. And that's what Carly was on. I wasn't even mad at the bitch. But y'all, this shit is crazy. Now, Carly claims that she was out with Mo somewhere. Some guys pulled up and beat Mo up and pulled a gun out on her. Child, I don't fucking know. Alexis says something like, she got into a bad deal with Mo over some movers, and Mo owes her some money. She claims that her and Mo were never in a relationship. They never slept together. Carly said, uh, bitch, I don't believe that. I, I, I got to be on Carly's side with that. I don't believe that neither. But I will say they were able to squash it like two grown-ass women. I was very proud of them. They, you know, agreed to, you know... You know, this is what happened. I apologize. Alexis apologized. And I think that was real big of her. So shout out to you, Alexis, for knowing that. You know what I'm saying? What you did was fucked up. And uh, you need to apologize for that bullshit. I, I, I'm with you on that. So y'all, it's the night of Sierra's I didn't go to jail today party, but I might go in a couple of months party, right? They all in there. They're sitting back. They chopping it up. Carly Red ends up showing up. She's over there talking with Rashida and um, Sierra. And they asking her, like, what happened? You were supposed to be here. What happened? Um, Carly is telling her side of the story about what happened. Sierra tells Carly, well, I heard you actually didn't want to show up because you don't want to be a part of it any goddamn way, right? Now, Carly says that that's not true. I never said that. I've been there for you. I will always be there for you. But how about the plenty of times that I've been there for you and you ain't been there for me? Sierra's pissed. Sierra goes and she walks off and leaves, right? Because she was like, bitch, whatever. You were supposed to be there for me. I will say this about Sierra. I kind of felt like it was selfish of Sierra. Like, everybody got their own shit going on. She didn't even want to hear Carly out, which I get. You got some information from somebody else. But, like, I don't know. I just kind of felt like Sierra was being a little bit selfish. That's just my opinion. Don't nobody come for me because I ain't sent for you like that, Rona. You don't want none. Don't come for me now. Sierra gets pissed. She goes and walks off. As she goes and walks off, she goes to the side. She's talking with Bambi and Malaysia from Basketball White. You know, big basketball head ass Malaysia. At this time, um, who's her name? Carly Red and Rashida over here to the side talking. Now, they reading Carly Red's lips because Carly Red is telling Rashida, like, this whole time that, you know, she's telling, she's, you know, mad at me for not being there for her. At least I know she didn't go to jail because she was on Instagram taking pictures with Stevie. Sierra reads her lips when Carly says that. She's like, oh, this bitch is over there talking shit about me. I'm going to go check this hoe. Child, Sierra goes over there and tells Carly Red, look here, me and CBJ got the same lawyer. That's why I took a picture with him. Bitch, I read your lips. I heard everything you goddamn said. They going back and forth. Sierra starts to call Carly Red a liar. Carly Red starts to tell Sierra to keep that same energy the next time you need an eyewitness. Now, Carly. Now, Carly. <laughs> now, bitch, you wrong for that. You got damn wrong for that. Sierra was like, look here, I already got one case. I ain't trying to catch another one. As y'all already know, when people come to break it up, that's when Carly Big Nuts starts to come out. Child people coming to break it up. 
Carly Nuts got oh so big. Next thing you know, Sierra big face the shit out of Carly Red. And a scuffle ensues. And the goddamn episode ends from there. On the next episode, you can see that Sierra's whole lace front is gone. The frontal cap is showing. It's a hot goddamn mess. That damn Sierra love to fight. She love to fight. She love to fight. I don't care. That's why her daughter was... Y'all know about her daughter getting into the fight with the mama and the, the daughter, girl. I'm just saying. Now, look here. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed. Y'all go ahead and drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. As always, I appreciate y'all's prayers. Thank y'all for looking out for your auntie. I really do appreciate that. And your auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Oh, elbow bump. I don't want to get no wrong. Elbow bump. I'm going to holler at y'all.